one of the key element in becoming a good fencer is to have good coordination. Now having good coordination, what does it mean? It means I have the ability to separate what my hands and my feet are doing. I can work them together, I can work them separate. In the fencing belt, the most basic actions can be used in different ways. So let's use an example of the, the lunge. So in the traditional teaching of the lunge, we separate the arm, then the legs. So what it does is reinforce the importance of having a strong extent to be able to reach and also reinforce this ability to catch somebody in the timing. Now when we move to the reality of the belt, we have a lot of situations in which the arm comes later, especially in uh, foil, we have a lot of situations in which the fencer is going to push, trigger reaction from the chain of rhythm, then trigger the arm at a later timing. They trigger the arm at a later timing because they trigger the parry first, the opponent parries, then they commit to the action. So the, the idea of the traditional extent and legs does not apply to all situations in balance. Another example of uh, coordination being used in different ways in the belt is how we set up defense. We sometimes have the legs moving first, sometimes have the hand moving first. When setting up for my defense, I can work with my legs first to give myself space to be safe, then late in the action, parry, and then repost. I can also approach him di differently and have an early work with my hand to disrupt my opponent preparation and from there work my defense. I may find the blade early, very early, or I may use that simply as a diversion. Bottom line, I have to train all kinds of coordinations because I'm going to need all kinds of coordination in the belt. I have to learn to move my feet alone, I have to work to move my hands alone, I have to work to move my hand with my back foot, my hand with my front foot, and all kind of different coordination. Simple little exercise to practice this kind of thing. First one, I'm in place, I separate. I'm going to work a simple advance with my arm going first. I extend and I work a simple advance. I can do the same thing with retreat, extend and retreat. Then I shuffle things around a little bit. I'm going to work the same advance, but this time the arm is going to be extended as the back leg moves, so late in the motion. Front foot, then back foot with extend. And same thing on the retreat. I start my retreat, then extend. And then I can stretch that to all kinds of extremes. I can completely finish my motion, then extend. I could do the extend and the recover within the motion. I start at the beginning, then reset before I'm done. I can come up with all kinds of ideas which in the end just helps me build different connections. So these exercises reinforce my ability to separate my hands from my feet. One thing you have to keep in mind is that training and bowing is different when it comes to mindset. In the training I want to train myself to do everything. In the belt, I'm going to apply skills to specific situations. So the idea of doing something in training that doesn't make sense should not exist. In training, everything should make sense because it's about learning skills, about learning connection, about learning coordination. Everything you do outside the fencing club can help your fencing. Whether it's running or learning new skills, you're going to reinforce your coordination, you're going to reinforce your ability to incorporate new concept and that's going to help your fencing. I really encourage you to be open-minded and creative in your training. Try new stuff and see how it works. Talk about it with your coach. 
and get an idea about how they feel about it. There is many techniques, many different schools, and as we can see on these videos, there is not only one way to fence. So go ahead, try new things and see if it works for you.